Ladies and gentlemen, you are watching The Red Report. I'm Chris Widjard. Uh, this is our Heroes episode. So who else uh, could we get on the show other than a, a, an absolute hero in, in most people's eyes that wear a, a Barnsley shirt? Uh, Brian Howard, you all right, Brian? Evening, gents. Uh, thank you very much for making time. I have no doubt that you're a very busy man at this time of year. Oh, very busy. It's been, um, since the season finished kind of over the last week or so, it's, it's been absolutely manic and uh, I think it's, uh, it's nice to actually switch the phone off for a little bit and uh, just have a, a good chat with you guys. Yeah, yeah. Not that you're busy rest of year, Brian. I'm assuming you are, but you're probably not as busy as my mate Carlo van der Watering, who is the busiest man in Barnsley. Here we go again. I'm all right, actually, now. My, <laughs> my wife, has she's not left me as in that way, but she's gone down to Portsmouth with my daughter for a few days. So, yeah, I've got the ninja, as we call him. So he's sat on his tablet at the moment, looking, why is Carlo talking to a screen again? So, yeah. I've just come from Portsmouth, and I, I didn't see her. <laughs> right, I'm ringing her. She said she was here. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Um, we've, had, we've had a few episodes this week just talking about what's gone down. There's so much happened in such quick succession since since the return and, you know, the, the miraculous uh, survival bid. Bra Brian, I'm assuming you, you didn't see that one coming, did you? In all honesty, no. Um, I think nobody did. I think you look, was it five games to go in the bottom five of the league and none of them went down. Um, it's not just Barnes, you know, like Saluton and, and Stoke who were down there and, and everyone. It was it's just incredible. Um, and then, you know, Hull and we're going to obviously got unfortunate with with the uh, the financial situation. I say unfortunate. It's a feel for the players because they performed and the manager they performed unbelievable because the runs the, the clubs not run properly. You know they're getting punished. Um, so to do it the way it was and like I said before, I was luckily I was at I was at Griffin Park for the game yeah. and just when that goal went in, it was you know it was incredible and goose pools and I was lucky enough to then get on the pitch and see the players after. So where there's no no fans, I had more accessibility. So to be there and witness that, it, it was great. It was almost good as, you know, playing in some of the games. Of course, of course. And just another chapter in what is a very storied uh, history of Barnsley FC, Carl, full of promotion and survival and, uh, you know, Johnson paint trophies. And it's been a busy 10 years. Where does that, where does that sit for you, Carl? We've talked about the, the, we've talked about it a lot in terms of on the pitch, but where does that sit in, in, in memory for you? Um, I th I th when it comes to escapes, I think it's, it's probably bigger than the, uh, you know, the Huddersfield one, purely because Huddersfield was happy, were happy with the result when it was a draw on the pitch, yeah. obviously at the cost of, of Peterborough. Um, to me, it's one of the biggest ones, purely because even just the running, when you looked at the last three games and you think Leeds, Forest, Brentford, that's three teams who were well, then in the top five, um, and if anything, you know, um, it shows that with the right manager and the right set of lads, and they don't have to be the best players in the league, but if they play for their manager and they play for that shirt, yeah. anything can happen. And that's why this division is, is still one of the greatest divisions in, in the world today. Of to course. Me. Of course. I, no, I, I, the I saw the Leeds, sorry, I saw the Leeds and Brentford games live, and I thought Barnsley deserved, well, definitely more from the Leeds game. And they definitely deserve to win at Brentford, for me. And like you said, if when they get set up and you're willing to work for your mate, and we talked about previously in team, other teams, you don't have to be the, the, the best team in the league, but if you're willing to run for your mate, then, then you'll get results. And they deserve those results and deserve to stay up. It's funny you mentioned the, the, uh, the, the Leeds game. We're talking about yesterday with the media lot with Doug O'Kane and, and Leon Wobshell. I didn't have a chance to ask the question, but it might be, I might get a better answer from yourself because you've been there and done it. Leeds obviously didn't get the result, Brian, but they got the performance. How does that affect things? Because it clearly did. Even though we didn't get the result, they obviously seem to be able to carry that on. I think it depends on, the, it depends, depends on the character of your management team and the players. Because it could be one of those where you go, we should have got something. Everybody knows we could, should have got something, but we didn't. And you can either go, hard done by, or pat ourselves on the back, we've done all right, nothing to lose and go the other way, or you can say, actually, we should have done, we are good enough, we're going to roll our seeds up last two, and go and get something. And to get the goals in the 96th and then 91st minute, that shows never say die attitude, which they've obviously learned from that Leeds game, and done the opposite, and gone, right, we're rolling our seeds up and going for it. Of course, of course. And we're going to look at some of those heroes this, this episode. So we'll, we'll make a bit a start on that. Carlo, we'll start at the beginning, we'll start at the back of the team. Yep. Goalkeeper, Jack Walton. Um, we had Brad Collins, we had Radlinger, we had Brad Collins, we had Radlinger. 
We had Brad Collins. Um, a few injuries uh, here and there, a few mistakes. Not from Jack, though. No, he's been absolutely... I've, I've talked in these past reviews, I've talked about the mental strength of Patrick Schmidt having to come on as a substitute and make a difference, which he continuously does so. Jack Walton's been at the club for uh, since God were a lad, it seems. And he's been waiting and waiting. And when he's been called on, he's never done anything wrong. But then we've brought two keepers in. You know, Adam Davis went and he must be thinking, oh, I've got a chance here. And two, two keepers are brought in. For him to get the call, I mean... We talk about the goals, we talk about Patrick Schmidt, we talk about, you know, uh, the, the goal, but actually the saves helped us, you know, helped us stay up as well because in every single match, it tends to be the hands, doesn't it, pushing his way. So, absolute. And, and you know, that shirt is now for his, isn't it? It's, it's, it's up to him to keep it. Whatever happens with Brett Collins, whether he'll stay or not. But definitely, uh, for me, um, I can't say one of the most improved because... He didn't play that often before, but he didn't do anything wrong for me. Nothing yeah, at all. Yeah. Brian, you, you'll have seen some of his big moments this season, uh, particularly since lockdown as well, because I know you've been doing a little bit of commentary for BBC Radio Sheffield. I know you've been on behalf of, of some of your, uh, your players. Um, you'll have seen his big moments, the big one against Luton, some big moments at Brentford. I know you went. Yeah, the Brentford ones for me, the, one, the standout ones, because... If you're going down to Brentford and you're getting a result, I think you're expecting Jack Walton to make a 10 saves. You know, Ben Rama, Watkins and Bueno, the, silver, <laughs> the team they've got. But he made two. So to have the concentration to say, actually, the two saves, and especially the one we're off the post, that is almost as important as, as Clark's goal at the end for me. Um, but, and for a young player to have that concentration that he could have switched off, so I'm not that busy here, and then goal and we're down. So to have that concentration... For me, it was absolutely huge. Yeah, yeah. And that's not something you, you kind of associate with older goalkeepers that are experienced and that have played a while. Uh, Carlo, we'll move further forward. Let's talk about Mads Anderson. Everybody's been talking about him all season, but it's been black and it's been white. Listen, Mads Anderson, um, we, we saw it when he signed that uh, he was so happy to be at the club to play at that level. He didn't have the easiest of times. And, uh, you know, the championship is, is... There are some really seasoned professionals. There are teams that have come down from the Premier League. It's not an easy decision, especially when you make a mistake. And he was prone to the up mistake. And I think that the lack of, um, an, you know, maybe an older head next to him to sort of guide him, because between him and, uh, you know, it was... Um, Mambo, uh, Bambo initially, wasn't it? You know, he had yeah. different partners. Um <laughs> I hate saying it. I think actually playing without the fans has helped him. Um, Solbauer coming in put him 70% help because he got somebody next to him that will put his arm around him when some goes wrong, but also gave him an I-5 when he gets something right. And he started doing the simple things right. And then if something does go wrong and you haven't got 12,000 people shouting your name, um, I think he just needed some confidence and I think that's what he's got now. So um, it, it's easy to look at the mistakes he's made, but he has been, especially aerial one, he's been an absolute rock, mm. an absolute Yeah, rock. I think he's won, he's won a, a high percentage of his, his aerial uh, yeah. jaws, hasn't he? Brian, in terms of a defender then, a centre-back coming from another country, a uh, different league, playing with uh, Bambo Diaby, then he played with Halme, uh, then he's ended up playing with Sobao towards the end. Uh, in different shapes, under, under Stendhal and then under Murray and then under Struber. It's not been an easy ride, has it? But it come good when it mattered. Yeah, and you know what Carlo said then, that you could see that he had the talent to come in and perform at that level. And so funny, at the end of last season, I was with another club and they were showing me uh, stats of certain players that they were like looking at, comparing to players that we were potentially going to take there and vice, vice versa. He was on that list. Right. And then this club went to the Premier League. So he came off that list. It would have been if they said the championship. So then when Barnsley signed him, I was like, that is a proper Barnsley signing because the money ball, the stats, that is going to be a great signing. So then I was a little bit surprised when he first struggled. But I completely agreed then. And I said it the other night. That, and I think for a lot of the players, it's helped with the fans not there. Because right. it's a young, young team. And they're going to make mistakes because it's so young and inexperienced. And when, like I said, it, and it's so difficult and passionate as a fan not to moan and groan. And, and, you know, I've watched games recently where it's meant a lot to me and I'm the same. But when they make a mistake and all you can hear is the manager encouraging, they're a okay and they're going to perform. And I think it's really helped that group. And I think then when the fans do come back, they'll grow. And I think, 
the way the club do business, he'll be one over the next two years that they'll sell for money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we mentioned um, he's been partnered by Halme, another man who's played numerous positions, uh, including centre-back, uh, defensive midfield, and also striker, leading to him being the, the third highest uh, goal scorer uh, at Barnsley season, Apple Almey, Brian Howard. What, what's your what's your thoughts on Apple? So uh, I know the one of the Finland under twenty one coaches quite well, and and when he came in, he mentioned about him and said he's got a lot of potential, um, similar to probably what's about Mads. Might need just an arm around him. He's an experienced head. Will make mistakes as he's learning, but if you look at him physically, he's got all the attributes to be a, a real top centre half, especially at Championship level. Um, could he go further with the attributes if he learns? If he cuts out the mistakes. And I think with the both of them, they've got natural talent that could take them further. They've always needed that older head with them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Carlo, he is uh, the most booked Barnsley player, Applewell. Man, what does that say about him? He's got a job to do, hasn't he? Um, I think from early on, actually, especially under Struber, Kenny Dougal, who you know I, I really rated. But I think because he was at the, towards the end of his contract, his age as well, I thought they always looked at obviously putting Alex Mowat in that role, but Apo Halm was playing there as well, just to prepare. Because if you depend on somebody that you know, you're probably not going to extend the contract. You need to look at your other options. Um, when he's played in front, sort of like at the bottom of the diamond, he, he, he takes it for the team, doesn't he? You know what I mean? His, his job is to protect those, that, that, you know, that back four. Um, I like him. He's just cool. He, he seems to be, um, how can you say it? Matt Anderson, you sometimes, you know, he's had my go a little bit or that lack of confidence. Maybe it's the finish in him, that cool-blooded Scandinavian kind of thing. Um, but, yeah, I, I like him because he just, he's just dependable. He just, wherever you put him, he does a job. You know, he, he went up front, didn't he? Was it? I can't even remember who we played at all. It's all, it's all, it's all he, a haste. He went up front against Luton and yeah. immediate, immediate impact. Um, he popped up on Boxing Day with a finish against West Brom uh, right, right at the end. And he's just a real physical presence, isn't it? I know Brian alluded to, to, to his physicality and stuff. And for such a young team, we've not really had that in certain areas of the field. No. I think he, he brings that together, does he? Oh, 100%. I, I think I've been guilty of saying, play him at the bottom of that diamond. Push, push Mowat up a little bit because you've got an extra goal threat. Um, but that's why Struber's in charge. Say, I'm not because Struber is, trains with him. He sees them. He's got the knowledge. He's got a system and he's sticking to that system. And... I suppose you have to, don't you? Because the first team believe in that ethos and that system. So do the under-23s, the under-21s, the under-18s. And that's why when you see players coming through, like a Romal Palmer, um, you know, Simo West, I know Brownie's been at the club quite a while, but that's when that, that transition to the first team is so much easier because it's exactly mm -hmm. the same style of football that they play in the, you know, under-23s and under-21s. So, yeah. um, brilliant player, one that we have to get a hold of. I have to absolutely keep hold of and, and I hope to see more of him next season. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think we will see more of him. Who knows where, where the chips fall in, during the, the summer. Uh, Clark Adore, a nice little left-footed player, just like yourself, Brian. Clark I, I Adore. Like Clark. Yeah, and obviously he's come up with a big moment. Um, it was a game earlier in the season, was it a hole on TV that he came off at half-time and, uh, yeah, and I was quite surprised that and I've always quite liked him. Um, I think he's athletic. Um, he's a nice footballer. So I'm a bit surprised when he does come off. But, you know, but we, when the big moment comes, he was there in the right place at the right time. So yeah. I think uh, whatever people's judgments are, and whether he's come off at half time, no one will care. They'll remember that no, moment for a long time. <laughs> no, no. Uh, January, we signed a massive player, an absolute. Um, diamond in terms of developing other players around him and, uh, and just giving us some stability, Brian, in, in Michael Solbauer. Have you come across a player like that in your playing career where, where there's been a rival or a player and he's, he's raised everybody else's game around him? Is that something you experienced or was that you? Uh, I think oh, I tried to be myself and I, tried, yeah, I think there's been a lot of players like that I've played with me. I think Barnes have been crying out for it. We've, we've spoke about this before. A lot of people spoke about it. They've been crying out for it for so long. Just need that experienced head, that cool head, that gets respect from the younger players, that they can look to for advice. He can control everyone, and for me, it might be the most important sign of the season for me. Yeah. Uh, has he been the best player? Maybe not, but if you talk about importance of what he's moulded and brought the best out of everybody else, the players we just mentioned there, Mads and Halme, would they have had the lockdown or the second half of the season they've had without Solbar? Not for me. No, no. Another player that's got better under under Saul Bauer, uh, Carlo, 
Jordan Williams, he's played numerous positions this season. He's played a left-hand side or a back three. He's played left wing back. He's played right wing back and right back and left back. He's played in numerous different roles. Impressed by him this season? Yeah. I mean, um, there's been a few, hasn't it, that, that sort of played in different positions. It's almost like we're going to that sexy Dutch football. I know I, you don't want to mention it, but, you know, where, you a, player, <laughs> where a player can play in, in various positions. It's that European influence of Struber. Um, yeah, and I know a lot of people um, always seem to think that, you know, um, that he goes unnoticed. But I think if, as a defender, you go unnoticed, you're doing your job on you almost. You know what I mean? Because we're stopping him coming. He's got the pace going forwards. I mean, you know, we had the shot that nearly went in. And another one that I think has got 10, 15% extra confidence with not having fans on his back. And, and as fans, I said it yesterday, you know, you're the 12th man and that's great. And when things are going well and everybody's cheering and clapping and singing, that's absolutely fantastic. But things are not going so well. And of those 12,000 people, 3,000 are booing your every touch or your header or whatever. It's, it's no good, is it? It's, it's like, you know, arguments within your own family. So um, very much under the radar, but effective wherever he's been placed. And he's not done anything wrong for him not to play where he is. Yeah. Yeah, he, he seems to cover a lot of bra uh, ground, Brian, doesn't he, Jordan Williams? He brings a bit of pace to, to the back three or back five. Yeah, he's another one who's got, he's a modern day footballer, he's athletic. Um, mm. yeah, he moves well, he, he's a good size, he's strong, um, but he can handle football. And like you said, he, he maybe goes unnoticed a little bit. But I think over the year coming and maybe moving forward, with squads coming down in terms of size, age, he is now perfect that he can then fit in two or three positions, but not just fit in, play them well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think he's going to be even more important to that squad over the next 18 months and, and moving forward. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Carlo, we have had some wonderful central midfielders at Barnsley and they all end up being left-footed. Uh, I just wondered if you, if you could roll any off your, off your tongue. Listen, I've, I've said it before um, on, on the show, I've said it at Charity, there is something about Barnsley creating that... that conveyor belt of, of midfielders when you go from your Redferns, your Hignets, your Mr. Howard, um, Horahan. We said earlier in the season, Alex Mowat is, is, is getting there, isn't he? Yeah. And I think what he's shown is that leadership capacity. Because that's not an easy thing, isn't it? We, we, we saw it a couple of seasons ago when, when Connor became captain. It's not something to struggle with, but suddenly you have to be a lot more vocal. And it's not just about your own games, bringing other players on. And I think... Alex getting the captaincy, he is a completely different player than the one that came to us from Leeds and that was sent out on loan to Oxford. I think he's got his personality right from what we're hearing. He's one of the first on the training ground, one of the last to leave. He's bringing the other players around him on and his drive on the pitch is just amazing. And you could see, I think, at the end, what it meant to everybody. We talk about Solbauer we're giving other players X percent extra, but I think um, Alex Mowat is, is, is up there as well. 100%, yeah. 100%. And for me, one of the key players to keep, to keep hold of. Yeah, Brian, uh, just touching on that. What, what is the difference in terms of being captain in what is a, you could call, successful team or team that's winning on a more regular basis, top six team, and then, and then being captain uh, you know, of a football team that's had three different managers, struggled near the bottom of uh, uh, table, you know, relegation zone, 311 days, well, well covered. Um, how, does that, how does that differ and stuff? From, from your personal uh, view and, and experience? It's a tough one because you're not only concentrating on your own performances because you've obviously done that for a reason, that you then everyone else is looking to you. So you might not be a shouter and a baller. And a, so you might be, I think Mal is kind of like this, where he goes, actually, give me the ball. If we're under pressure, I'll, I'll receive the ball. I'll keep things ticking over. Mm. I'll always be that one that step, steps up. Even if, things, if someone else is getting booed or whatever that, I'll give me the ball and I'll control the tempo, I'll organise people and I've seen a real growth in him, the same like, because, you know, I've got players at Oxford, because I saw him at Oxford, so watching him there, so the player is now, it's a, it's a different person. Yeah. Um, and I, I think, I've done a chat to Brown yesterday and we went through some of his goals and his goal against Blackburn, the, the pass from now on the half volley, cushion it, the, it that's, that's uncoachable, that's natural talent uh, in my eyes and I think he's got that and I think he'll go from strength to strength. Yeah. I think with Mowat to go then to the next level, would be my only criticism him is, is shooting and finishing and the goals. Because I think he's, def he's got 100% got the ability to do it. And then once he does that, he's, he'll really go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the assistant Brentford 
facing away from goal with the outside yeah. of was it his, his, his left foot to oh, put it in left the, foot to uh, yeah uh, his awareness isn't it that's that, his peripheral his, vision yeah. there is yeah. is ridiculous he's got a footballing brain hasn't he yeah yeah he has and and he's always had that but I think he's like you said he's stepped up and he's got himself fitter and he he feels he's got the confidence of I'm the leader of this team uh, and it shows in his performances in my opinion and like I said that, that, that running I thought he was absolutely excellent. Yeah. And he looks great Brian, in a Barnsley shirt. Just, just saying, just yeah, putting it out yeah. there. <laughs> uh, Brian, am I right in thinking you started on like left back, left midfield kind of area before before transitioning to, to midfield? Is that about right? To be fair, I, I, I played as a striker coming through. Right. Um, uh, and I then got the question... moved to the left side. And then Andy Rich actually signed me as a left sided midfielder. Yeah, but my, my question to you really is obviously, Alex Moat. Central midfielder, great vision. Connor was signed as a, le- a left winger from from Plymouth. Mm. Yourself, you weren't naturally centred to start with. I, and it's a different level. I played Sunday league, and I used to play up front. Then I played at Middle at Park. Shut up, Carl. <laughs> you play at Middle. You play at Middle at Park. It's a different skill set, isn't it? It almost feels very busy in there. You've got to be. You've got yeah. to be really on your wits, haven't you? Yeah, you have. You and you've got to realise that sometimes you've got more time than you think. Is everything so busy? And, the good players then have time and, and Mowat does that. He, he gets the ball down and plays when you think it's 100 mile an hour and the way Barnsley press and the way they win the ball back, he then is the one that goes, well, we've won it back now, settled down. And then that's when everyone else goes, oh, hang on a minute. And you don't realise the importance of that. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's just interesting. Carl, I don't you be laughing at me because I play Sunday League football. <laughs> Next We've question. got them both in now. We've got them both in. <laughs> not, not in the Dutch leagues. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll look at some of the youngsters then that have, have contributed, uh, Carlo, in more recent time. Yep. Romel Palmer, he finally got the nod after you know a, a few years of, of injury wars. And then obviously his season got cut short, but played a massive part in that, in really getting the ball rolling, rolling against QPR. Yeah, I think it's, it's testimony of the hard work he's done in the under-23s. It's testimony in the faith that Struber had first game after lockdown and people were saying, and people Googling him, what position does he play, what does he do? I mean, we brought him in from, was it the Man City Academy a couple of years ago? And I think that says, you know, he's obviously got some pedigree. Um, and he didn't, he didn't do much wrong, did he? He was really, really calm on the ball. He, you know, he was, he was turning players. Um, injury, yeah, it, it, it's absolutely horrible. Let's hope we see him at the start of next season because I think he is again one of those talents. When when you, it's exciting, isn't it? If we're still in the championship, which I'm, I'm pretty sure we will be, when you think you've got players like Simoes, like Odor, like Palmer, like Brown, that youth they've now got that experience in this division, haven't yeah. they? And and and, and they can do it against the big teams. And I think Romo Palmer will be one of those. Um, didn't see much of him, but I think we'll see a lot more of him. And I can't wait. Absolute talent. I do. I do hope so. I do hope he can get get fit quicker and uh, and hopefully sustain that. Um, yourself, Brian, you've played in numerous teams uh, and, and we mentioned numerous positions. I'm going to talk about Marcel Ritzmeyer now. Now, to the untrained eye, some Barnsley fans may may have berated him. Uh, however, we look at some of passing stats, he's always up there. Uh, Struber, in his press conference with me and Carl, the 10th have always talked about his positional, uh, positional strengths and positional... Um, awareness. Awareness off the ball you tell me did he earn his shirt what what is it a myth are the fans talking garbage do you understand what the, do you know what i mean yeah i think pre-lockdown i think it was one of the last games before lockdown i, I was actually at the reading game away and yeah. um I, I might have said i worry for this team and i worry for certain players in this team and um and i hold my hands up and say he was one i was a, i wasn't i wasn't convinced um at all i thought there was better options than to play him but obviously the managers brought him in but then watching him uh, against Brentford the other night I was, actually he's come back and he's, he's really earned his shirt he's earned his stripes in he deserved from that team and I thought he was excellent as part of that team um, strength and that team unity so you know I take back from maybe the, the not great things that I said from the Reading game because he, he, he done it on the big stage at Brentford in the last game it, 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 I think my biggest um, criticism was, and that was joint, I suppose, um, set pieces. You know, we took mm. six set pieces in one match and none of them got to a Barnsley player. And I, 
I've, I've said it before, like when my daughter played cricket and if she was the first one in and she went out for a duck three times in a row, she'd be down at fifth or sixth. And I get it. Because as a fan, you want instant change to make it better. But actually, to some players, that's not how it works. Because if you take them off that, they're never going you know, to learn. But when mm. you started playing centrally, the passing, absolutely, mm. yeah. And, and yeah, I was, I was exactly the same. I think, what's he doing here? But then I also think he knows Struber, he knows the plan, he knows exactly how Struber wants to play. Is he one of those voices on the pitch influencing mm. some of the others around him? I mean, I don't know, but certainly towards the end, yes, he deserved a shirt to me. I guess it's difficult as well, because I know you've been to some of the games, Brian, so you get a full pitch view. When you're watching it on, on iPhone or you're watching it on Sky, you know, the images are focused on the ball. You don't kind of see shape and mm. stuff like that to a certain degree. So, so we probably missed that point. And then obviously with set pieces, the ball's dead. You're focusing on just on that one player. So, so every mistake is highlighted to a certain degree. Have you ever had the case where somebody's been taken off set pieces to just, just through not being good enough or, or poor delivery at times? Yeah, I've seen lots of it and seen, you know, on, on training pitches, hours and hours put in, you know, days before a game. Sometimes come in and you do the whole hour and a half training session on set, set pieces. Uh, yeah. And I've seen players being sent out in training to take them and go, mm, actually, after five or six, yeah, you, you go into the box, someone else go and take them. So, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, I've witnessed that not just on match days, in training. Of course, of course. Uh, we'll, we'll move through the midfield. Uh, I'm, I'm conscious of time. Uh, we'll talk about Callum Styles. You've uh, you've been you've been and watched him recently, Brian. How impressed are you by that young man? Proper proper player. I like him a lot. Um, saw him before he moved to Barnsley um, a, a lot, and then when he got the move, I thought, God, that is a Barnsley signing. Someone who's young, got a talent. I expect him to probably play a bit earlier, but obviously he wasn't ready. Um, and then, then he's come in and he's done exactly what I thought. And he's got a bit of everything. Um, again, you know, another left side, eh? he's, he's jinky, he can dribble, he can pass, he can finish. And the composure for the finishing at, at Brentford the other night, you know, another young lad that could easily be out of the stadium. Um, yeah. and, and he had another one, I think, what was it, just after the second half, where he had another left foot driver to keep the save. Um, so I think he, if I'm a Barnsley fan, and he's only really just broken in, would be the one I'd be probably most excited about. Um, I think you look for, he, he's broken, obviously, he brought in, Ramal Palmer's come in, Aidan Marsh has come in, maybe maybe Matt Wolf's come in, uh, Jack Walton's come through the academy. It shows the importance of the way Barnsley structure their football club and business, these players. And now, looking, now they've stayed up and they've all got that experience. You're going, this team could move, move forward yeah. and got valuable assets as well as good players right about for that team. But I think he could be the most exciting one. Yeah, yeah. Um, Luke Thomas came in uh, back end of the season for, mm. for Corey Woodrow. Corey Woodrow probably not adding goals to his game like he was before the break, uh, Carlo. However, he played a pivotal part, Luke Thomas, in terms of re, you know, regaining the ball in, in good areas. and He's full of energy, isn't he? Yeah. Um, first, well, first match of the season, scores the winner against Fulham. So everybody thinks, you know, we've, we've got a world beater. His role yeah. probably slightly changed. Um, and it was quite sacrificial, wasn't it? He, he was chasing every blade of glass. He was, he, he's always breaking the opponent's play up and then passing it for other people to go forward and do what needs to be done. Um, often taken off after about sort of like first half, 60 minutes, because I literally think he is such high tempo and then we bring somebody else on to sort of prolong the pain of the opponent, so to speak, because we play with that high energy. And um, He's, he's one of those that sometimes you forget he's there and then just as you think he's, he's there and he's putting a tackle in or, or he's driving forward and he just fits in regard to what Brian said, 100% agree. And I think, you know, we talk about Struber and his face as young players. Huge. Oh, hold on. <laughs> For the last five minutes, Dale Tong's here. Um, huge, huge um, credit has to go to Martin Devaney and everybody else in the academy because, you know, these players are coming in, they're ready to play but they've been primed by Mr. Devaney and Co. Of course. Uh, Dale, thanks for joining us. Are you well? I apologise, Jen. I've had a bit of a, a, bit of a trauma with a, with, a, with a little one. No worries. That, that's all right, but we've, we've got six I'm, minutes left. You know, six minutes is better than nothing. I'm not going to go into detail, but it's all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant transition. I did, I did Speak- wonder about that wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of... Speaking all over the place, we'll look at Barnsley's front three. Uh, and at times, Connor Chaplin and Jacob Brown seem to be all over the place, Brian. 
They covered every blade of grass and pressed so high up the field, really defended from the front. A lot of assists from Jacob Brown, a lot of goals from Connor Chaplin at big times. Yeah, and I think if you look at all of their goals, it seems to be one setting up the other. They've got a real partnership going, a real understanding. And I know both of them really well. I've known Connor since he was a kid coming through at Portsmouth and obviously my relationship with Brownie. And they're two really, really good lads. Obviously, yeah, Dale's worked with him day in, day out and stuff. And they'll, they'll work, they're, work, work their absolute nuts off for you. Um, and I think yeah. that's probably why the last game of the season, they missed all these goals out and put, I've gone with them two for the setup to to press Brentford from the front. And that, eventually that's what they've got the result from. Of course, of course. Dale, seeing as you're here, we'll talk about some of you've worked with uh, and you've known for a while. Collie Woodrow, his mm-hmm. goals have been pivotal to Barnsley's survival, haven't they? He's... I know, he, I know he kind of didn't play the back end of the season. You know, the last two or three, he didn't really get the nod and he went with other players. But his goals kept Barnsley in that fight, didn't they? Yeah, of course. I think um, Carl is, um, what you'd say, is his role within the team is quite immeasurable, to be honest, because although he's still not an old player, his experience um, at a higher level, I think, has helped, uh, not just last season when he came in, but this season especially. Um, so as we mentioned previously the experience in that team is quite low yeah. so Carl is yes his goals were massive but at the same time probably his experience and, and more within games were really really important because you could always trust him to get hold of the ball uh, look after it and just retain possession when obviously there's times when we really needed that so um, I think that was probably one of his biggest things just his experience and uh, game management Yeah you kind of don't think of Coyle Woodrow as an experienced player do you but he is in this team but uh, yeah, good point. Good point. Uh, Carlo, we'll just move on to, to one more player, Patrick Schmidt. Uh, he didn't play much, but he played some vital role in Barnsley's uh, survival. Big winner at Millwall, um, and obviously a big winner against Forest, and an assist at Brentford. Um, if I said it once, I said it ten times, and I will say it again. The mental strength is must, is immeasurable because for you to get a taste here and there, twenty minutes here, half an hour there. That's bad enough because you're never really getting your stride, do you? But to bring you on and to be able to positively influence by scoring a goal, you know, if you come on as a defender and, you know, you get the ball, you block it, you pass it, you think job done, but have to score a goal, especially with the confidence being, yeah, and I, well, I wasn't saying it was low, but, you know, we had a lot of ground to, to cover. So I hope to see more of him. I really, really do. Um, and you could just see in the clips from the club afterwards how much it meant to him, how much, I mean, you know, talking about warriors and everything. So, yeah, I can't... I'm, Listen, if you bring somebody on and they keep scoring goals and they've got five minutes to play, credit where credit is due. Yeah, of course. Uh, Dale, before, before you arrived, we went through the entire team. We've just talked about them all. I just wondered, any standout, other than the obvious Alex Moat, who has won both the, the, both the player of the season trophies, any, any big heroes that you think uh, you know, have, have been absolutely etch on above the rest? Uh, what you mean from the whole season or just from the actual restart? Yeah, just, yeah this entire season, Dale, yeah. Well, I think if you look at the season as a whole, um, you would probably say um, the progression of Mads, which has been chalk and cheese. Um, Solbauer coming in, I still think it's the catalyst for us staying up. Um, You've been listening to us. Huh? <laughs> You've been listening to us, not being on here. Obviously not. <laughs> <laughs> Too busy cleaning up shit. <laughs> Um, it's funny because that's uh, what Solbo has been doing. Yeah, <laughs> true. true, yeah. Um, and then you and then you look at um, obviously the front boys. I mean, I'm sure uh, Brown has been mentioned. Um, he gets a lot of stick, does Brownie, but he's the most selfless player in that team, and he has yeah. been for obviously since he got into the team. Um, and he's the one. He's the glue that sticks those boys together, especially with a change of system. He's the one constant. He's the one that plays week in, week out, and he's really, really important to that team. Not just for his assist that he gets, but actually just for the um, sheer work he gets through. Um, and then you look, obviously, since the lockdown, you, you talk about your Callum Styles again, your Mads, um, Waltz. Uh, the kid has been unbelievable, and that's three times now he's been asked to come in when when God. it's a really tough situation, and he's coming at the end of every season over the last three seasons and done the business so. Um, I think he deserves a chance now. And then you'd look at, um, obviously, the boys that have popped in with a couple of goals at the end, which is obviously really, really crucial. Of Can I just say, before you finish, Chris, I was most... Uh, to me, Brownie and Styles post the COVID break, physically, 
I was ex- impressed with. Yeah. You, you could just see they've not been set watching telly. I'm not saying that's what the others did. <laughs> but physically, Callum Styles, when we interviewed him early on the season, looked small. And yeah. he's come back like a man and, and bulked up. And Brownie's mm. physique, and I mean that as a player, not in like, ooh, um, absolutely. He is just ripped. And the pace and energy, 100%. Go yeah, on. but they Go live on. it. Those those two players live it. They don't. They, that break would have been absolutely irrelevant. They live. They live that, and that's how they are. And which is obviously a, a testament to them too. Dale, thank you very much for coming on for the last six minutes and <laughs> summarising it. You've I done do apologise. You've, you've done what you've done. What Brian did in twenty four minutes. In six. Well, some <laughs> things more efficient. Some things never change. I'll, I'll always, I'll always, I'll always look quicker at finishing the job. <laughs> Dale, thank you very much for joining us. Brian, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Cheers, chaps.